Hey, Facebook family. Good evening. Pastor Jerry here. Whew. One of those days, y'all. One of those days <laughs> where uh, just stuff went crazy, stuff went wild. Um, but I'm here. I thought I wouldn't make it tonight, but I'm here. And uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video from last night. Um, all we're doing right now is we are praying for our kids. Um, as I told you guys in the first video yesterday, uh, or maybe it was the one on Sunday, um, that um, the Lord gave me a word for my for, for my kids, specifically my daughter, and that, um, that I've been holding on to. And um, even though even though the word does not seem to be coming to pass as fast as I want it to be coming to pass, there are some things happening that I can see. Uh, for my son too, I need to be praying for him also. But um, so, and like last night, we talked about how it's important to make sure that um, you have a word from the Lord about your child. Uh, because if you don't have a word from the Lord about your child, then you don't really know how to pray other than praying in the Holy Ghost. And so, last night we talked about a bunch of stuff, just how how to how to press in, how to pray for. Um, the things that God told you to pray for, how to uh, believe him for things for your kids. And then we prayed a little while also too. So I have two things I'll share tonight and then we'll um, meet again on Wednesday. So Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you, Father God, that we can open up our heart and mind to you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you give us wisdom and intellect and discernment. We thank you, Father God, that we can know our children the way you know our children the way you know us father and that we continue that we can continually be godly parents spirit-led patient parents father and that we don't jump the gun that we don't overreact that we don't become overly judgmental and harsh that we don't provoke our kids to anger in a bad way father and that we are the kind of parents that you've called us to be father in your name we pray amen all right uh hey now so tonight, we're going to talk about a couple things. And um, number one, um, this is some things that, 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 that my wife shared with me a few months ago about um, we know our kids. We know our kids very, very well. Um, we either had them or adopted them or, or just whatever. And so we know them better than anybody else. And quite frankly, um, we know them better than they know themselves. And so... We know their strengths and their weaknesses. And so what we were talking about, my wife and I, is we began to take authority over their weak areas of their lives. We began to take authority over things in their lives that they may not know that they're going through, uh, that they may not even be able to articulate. And even if they're 20 or 30, um, they, they may not be able to articulate why they do what they do, why they think how they think, why they feel how they feel. But you know them, and quite frankly, you know them and you know you and you know uh, their 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 parent their other parent and whether you're married or divorced uh, you know the idiosyncrasies the shortcomings the um, bad side of you and your and and your child's father and you need to begin to pray against those things those weaknesses that you know are not of the Word of God so what I mean by that well if they have a short temper pray against that um, the Bible is so clear about um, being around someone who's got a short temper. Um, if they have a high level of fear, you need to quote the word over them. The, uh, uh, well, the Bible says that God didn't give me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Um, if, if, if they are controlling, if they are manipulative, um, if they know how to push people's buttons, um, any of those things, if, here we go, ooh, hope that if anybody does if, if they have a tendency to try to act like the other gender, um, you, all those things are not of the Lord. And so you need to call those things out in your prayer time. You need to lovingly uh, correct those things uh, with them one-on-one. -on -one. And um, don't make a big deal out of it. Um, and I've done both. I've been bad at it and I've been good at it. And so I hope I'm better at it. But I challenge you now to pray and ask the Lord, to show you your child's weak areas, uh, you know them, and then begin to pray on those, bind them, take authority over them, and uh, say, Satan, you will not have my child. My child 
is, 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 a, is property of Jesus Christ, and God has a legacy for my child in Jesus' name. Now, you should also pray for, on their strengths. Um, if they are leaders, if they are confident, if they are humble, um, if they are, um, if they follow instructions very well, if they're organized, um, if they are in, an encourager, um, if they complete tasks, I would say, and this is one thing I've learned from my kids, uh, unfortunately, they'll never hear the compliments. They'll always hear the, you know, the, the gripes or criticisms. So you've got to overcompensate with compliments. And a lot of us parents aren't compliment built. Complimenting is not our love language. It doesn't do anything for us. And so some of you guys may have to work at it. <laughs> you may have to work on going, God, your room looks so nice. You know, your hair looks so nice. Oh my gosh, you brushed your teeth today. And they're, you know, 17. Uh, oh, oh, oh my gosh, you did all your homework. That's excellent. Hey, let's grab an ice cream. Um, you, you may have to do things that aren't your norm that don't, um, that don't bless you at all. Um, uh, but you do them because they build up your child. So first thing is to take authority over their weaknesses, pray against them, ask the Lord to give you wisdom on them. And, and, and then also find out, ask the Lord where it came from. If your child has a, um, um, has a big area of fear, ask the Lord where it came from. It may, it may have come from you. Um, you never know, or their spouse, or sorry, or, or your spouse, or their, their other parent. It may have come from a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle. Um, you know, that's why I don't, you know, I don't do well with, um, how do I put this? I won't offend anybody. Um, I never dressed up in costumes and scared my kids because the spirit of fear can hop on them really fast. And um, I have one child that is deathly afraid of, of roller coasters. Uh, so, um, you know, and that happened at a young age accidentally. So, but j just make sure that, that, um, that, that you're praying against that. Hey, Jamie, and that you're making sure that their weaknesses aren't, aren't, are not becoming a big part of their lives. And then, um, the next thing is, is, is their strengths. Find areas that they're good in, that they're great in, that they excel in and make a big deal out of it. A big deal. Okay. All right, our last thing is, um, I learned this from a book that I read a few years ago, um, and it talked about how, well, and I'll, and I'll tell you my side, you know, I want my kids to be able to listen to me and obey me and me be their hero and da-da-da and me be their mentor. And the book just said, thank God and don't be jealous of people around you who can speak into their lives. And, you know, for me, it's like, gee, you, you don't believe what I say. And, but when someone else says it, or a coach or someone at church or uh, a, a grandparent, oh, well, it's, it's, it's the gospel now. And I've said it, you know, for four years. Um, so I want us to begin to pray for mentors besides us. Um, as we allow our kids to go to school, go to high school, go to college, uh, we won't be the only voice that they hear. And it's important, it's imperative that we pray that um, the, the loudest voice is, is the voice of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The most influential voice is, is the voice that God has for them. And don't be upset, don't be frustrated when, when God brings people in their lives who can say the same thing you can say and they'll finally listen. Because at the end of the day, we want our kids to be holy, to be humble, to be hungry, and, and to go to heaven. And uh, that's it. And so who cares how they get there? And that's what I say to myself. Because again, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty macho kind of guy. And I'm, you know, it's like, well, gee, so you listen to them and not me? Well, dang, I guess I'm nothing. Well, I just go and leave you alone. Well, you know, let them pay your bills. You know, and, and that's how I felt to the inside. It really was. And it really hurt my feelings. And so I've had to learn to step back and let certain people at my church, certain coaches, um, people on TV say the same thing I'm saying. 
the, I mean y'all to the T of what I'm saying. And they'll go, Dad, did you hear that? That's awesome. I'm going, it, it's, it's, just, it's just so frustrating. But bottom line, we need them. We need them to kind of corral our kids, kind of, kind of um, be, be like bird dogs or cow dogs and nip them in the heels and say, okay, no, uh, you need to go this way, not this way. And especially when we aren't around, um, we pray that there are no pedophiles in our kids' lives. Uh, we pray that there are no molesters, no murderers, uh, no drug dealers, um, no one who's promiscuous. We, we pray against that. We don't want those kind of mentors. Uh, those are called maniacs, not mentors. And so we pray that, 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 here's what we pray. We pray that God puts a hedge of protection around our kids, even if they're 74, even if they're 56, that no matter where they go, they're protected uh, until they come to the revelation of who they are in Christ. And even then, so there. So that's it. So number one, uh, pray against and take authority over your child's weaknesses. Number two, um, encourage them in their strengths, things they do well. And then number three, pray for godly mentors in their lives. Pray for godly mentors in their lives so that when we aren't around, they hear the same thing. Yes, you had a wonderful choir teacher. Yes. So there we go. There we go. So, and um, that's important, guys. So important. Okay, well, let's pray. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing on our lives, Lord, as parents, as, as role models. And, and even though some of us here don't have kids of our own, we've encouraged kids over our lives, God. And I thank you, Father God, that you continually put godly people in our children's lives. I thank you, Father God, that that the people who are in our kids' lives are holy and on fire for you, Lord, that they'll say the same thing that you say, leading our children to you, Father. We come against you, Satan, in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is over our kids. No pedophile, no fornication, no drug addiction, no injury, no alcoholism. We thank you, Father God, that Satan is defeated in this realm and that our children belong to you, Father. I thank you, Father God, right now, Lord, that our children are growing up, and, and not even, even if they are technically grown, they're still growing up under your admonition, under your favor and blessing. And Lord, you continually steer them towards you, Father. You allow things to happen in their lives that continually steer them to you, Father. We thank you, Father God, that the words that we said that were truth and life of you ring in their ears all the time, Father. That when they hit hard roads, they'll think about what we've said and that what we've said is what you say and that they'll relate it to you, Father, and that they'll turn to you, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, that every child that, that, that and every grandchild, every great-grandchild, they, they have that moment of faith where they're at a point in their lives where they have to choose you or choose themselves. They're, they're at that crossroad of faith, Father, and that they choose you and not themselves and not, not, not the world. They choose Jesus. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for this night. We thank you for the God that we can grow more and more like you, Lord, and that our kids are hungry for you, Lord. Our kids are hungry for you, Father. So, Lord, we thank you for this night. Thank you for this fast we're doing. And we give you honor and glory, Lord. Amen and amen. Well, today I, I had pretty much the, the exact same thing as far as my food. I had lobster bisque. I had Caesar salad and the bread. So it was, it was really good. Really, really good. So, all right. Well, guys, thanks for, for, for hopping online. All of y'all I can and can't see. And I love you tons. And I'll be here tomorrow night. So um, I'll talk to you guys soon. See you. Bye-bye.